And greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station. Join us. And if you love what we are doing, you're getting good results with our suggestions and our recommendations, and you're just learning a lot more how you can be healthier and happier and have a better level of vitality, tell your friends. We want them to join us too. Because it's only you and I that can change our health. The doctor will not change our health. The doctor doesn't even know anything about health. They only use drug prescriptions to cover up the sins of our past life. Our conditions, whether they're healthy or unhealthy, are brought about by our choices. 98% of all the conditions that we are plagued with are brought about by our choices. We can make better choices. And there are three ways to be healthier. I'll talk about that someday. I'm writing a blog right now. I was just wrapping it up before I came into the studio. There are three really good principles that we should be doing every day as we age to reduce the aging process. Oh, we're all going to get older. Every day we get older. And we're not going to stop that. It's inevitable. But we can slow it down. We can live longer in a healthier state. I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to live longer. I just hate what I'm going through right now. I don't want to have this for another 10 years or five years or whatever it might be. I'm tired of the way I'm living. Well, change that. Did you know you can change that? You can improve your health as you get older? And there's no condition that you can't improve. There's no age limit, no boundaries. We can make changes every day. And it doesn't take very long to see the results. You'll see the results within three to six months when you adopt the three principles and you make a difference in your life. I'll talk about that in the coming weeks. But right now we have a great program coming up. We're going to talk about two herbs that I love because we're not far off from winter. And these two herbs will knock out your cold and flu. They'll kick them to the curb. And these herbs are endographis and pelagonium. Two herbs that can be used together. And I'll cover that in today's program. We'll talk about how to neutralize the risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia just by exercising. One of the key principles of the three principles. And we'll talk about new drugs for pediatric diabetes. Pediatric diabetes. I don't even like to say the two words together. It's a, it's a sin. And are you getting value from your curcumin supplement? Because it takes a lot to absorb curcumin. Are you using the right type of curcumin to get the best results? Many herbal compounds, alkaloids, and key ingredients in herbal compounds are very, very hard to be absorbed. Are you taking herbal medicines, herbal remedies? And you might be only absorbing a very, very small amount. Berberine, hot on the to-do list. Everybody's taking berberine. 
But do you know that you only absorb 1%? 1% of the level that you consume. So we want to make sure that when we take an herb, we're going to get as much absorption as possible. Then I'm going to give you a Dear Cherry letter. And this letter was from a longtime listener. What do I suggest? For someone recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And back to school supplements for kids. What, I, what do I recommend that kids take when they go off to school? Then we'll talk about what can we do about gallstones, gallbladder disorders. And what about a little bit of dark chocolate? Oh, I like that. And it's good for your heart. So we have a lot on the agenda today, a lot of good stuff to cover. And we hope that you get great results when you start implementing some of these into your schedule. So let's talk about the cold and flu season. It's not far off. It's right around the corner. Usually, flu season starts in October and peaks from December through March. Now, Australia's winter flu season has already begun. And that can indicate to us what might happen here. If you look around the world and they're fighting cold and flu in a different time zone, we can, we can expect it to arrive here at a certain period of time in the same season, and then we know how to fight it. So flu season off to an early start in Australia with higher illnesses and a higher illness rate than any other average season. Unusually high numbers of cases in children. Natural treatment and prevention for cold and flu and other types of respiratory tract infections. And most of these, the cold and flu and the infection in the respiratory tract, bronchitis, sinusitis, COPD, not, not COPD. I shouldn't classify that in the same category. But bronchitis and sinusitis and cold and flu are primarily caused by a virus, not a bacteria. So if the doctor think he's thinking he's doing, or she's thinking that they're doing something good for you by giving you an antib antibiotic for cold and flu or upper respiratory tract infections, doesn't work. 98% of all infection all viral infections, cold and flu, and upper respiratory tract infections are caused by a virus. Only 2% may be related to bacteria. So antibiotics don't work in most cases. Now, there are very, very strong documented scientific benefits of andrographis and pelagonium. It will shorten the duration of the cold and flu symptoms. Proven. Reduce symptoms of respiratory tract infections. Proven. Effective for acute bronchitis. Proven. Relieves sore throat. Proven. Quiets cough and may stop coughing. Proven. Pelagonium. Traditional medicine plant from South Africa. It has a broad spectrum antiviral and antibacterial. And its effects demonstrated against human influenza, bird flu, rhinovirus, COVID-19. Additionally, boosts the body's immune cell 
the moon, the immune cell activity and reduces inflammation. The natives in Africa have been using it for hundreds of years. And I like to see things come from Africa. You know, so many things come from Europe or someplace around the world. There are very few plants that become recognized as medicinal from South Africa. This one is very, very effective. And you need a very small quantity, only 60 milligrams a day. I like to take 30 milligrams twice daily, along with andrographis, about 400 milligrams twice a day. Or the combination of the two together, even better. Absolutely, pelagonium fights the common cold. Here's a study result. 100 adults with the common cold treated with pelagonium or placebo for 10 days. The results versus placebo. 16% greater reduction in symptoms intensity on day three. 50% reduction by day five. By day five, over 70% of the group taking pelagonium experiencing major improvements. 5% were completely recovered versus only 20% of the placebo group where no part of the group were completely recovered. And day 10, 80% of the pelagonium group completely recovered versus 30% in the placebo group. You know, when you reduce colon flu, don't just think that you'll feel better. You will, of course, absolutely, you'll feel better. But think what it does financially. You may have taken off three or four or five days from work. Maybe you used up some PTO time. Maybe your kids have stayed home from school and you had to stay home because you couldn't find a babysitter. You couldn't find... Uh, any daycare center. Well, you know, there's all kinds of complications when you're stuck with a cold and flu. You're miserable. You're spending money on medication. You don't feel good. Um, It isn't just getting over the cold and flu, but there's a lot of other conditions associated with feeling better. You are better. Everything you do is better. Now, when you take pelagonium, and you combine that, wow, with andrographis, you will feel better faster. Now, andrographis is extremely effective against all types of viral infections, including HIV, herpes simplex, that's like cold sores and fever blisters, the common cold, COVID-19, influenza, and viral hepatitis. Now, the dosages. And if you can find this in a combination already in a capsule or tablet, it is 30 milligrams of pelagonium standardized to umpkaling and polyphenols with 400 milligrams of andrographis standardized to andrographolides. The andrographolides are the key compounds that are found in andrographis. Now, in studies with andrographis, 50% of the study group that were taking andrographis reduced their colon flu by 50% in two days. and almost 100% within four days. Now, when you put these together, andrographis and pelagonium, you have an antiviral combination that will outperform any medication or drugs. Now, for kids, if they cannot swallow a capsule, kids can use propolis. Propolis is a multi-antimicrobial. That means it fights all kinds of 
pathogens, all kinds of infection. That means viral infection, bacterial infection, and fungal infection. And you can mix propolis. It has a very, probably a, what I would say, a more of a neutral taste. It's not bitter. It's not uh, um, strong. It's not objectionable. And you can mix propolis with food if you can't swallow a capsule. You can also find it in a chewable tablet. Propolis in a chewable tablet, particularly when it's mixed with gamma cyclodextrin. Now we talked about absorption. Gamma cyclodextrin is a starch and it's treated with enzymes and that forms a very effective delivery system and when you bind that with a substance like propolis, it increases the, uh, the, the propolis absorption and other compounds with gamma cyclodextrins up to eight times. So if you're taking 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams, now you're getting the effect as if you took eight times that. Like 200 milligrams, that's like, that's like 1,600 milligrams then, right? Eight times two. 16, 16, instead of 200. Now it's 1,600. Because you're getting more out of the dosage you're taking when it's complex to the gamma cyclodextrin, which is a very effective, it's been around for 125 years, and it was developed by the drug companies to increase the absorption of drugs. But now it can be used to increase the absorption of anything. And when you combine gamma cyclodextrin with propolis, it can be absorbed up to eight times better. Eight times. That's huge. So for cold and flu, what are we thinking about? And it's going to come. You're probably not going to escape a cold and flu this year. You may have several. It's not unusual. So we take a combination of andrographis and pelagonium for adults and for children they can use propolis with gamma cyclodextrin. Now wouldn't we all want to live a long life with all of our mental faculties? And we can if we do the right things. You know, our health is not dependent on someone else. We don't lose our health because we are unlucky. We don't lose our health because grandma was not healthy. We don't lose our health because God has met at us and, he's, and we're being punished. But we can neutralize the risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia with exercise. Now, isn't that something? Resistant exercise reduces symptoms of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Resistant training is great for your body. It's using a weight-bearing exercise, meaning you're using a weight because you need something to make your body stronger. It increases muscle mass and you become stronger. And it strengthens and improves bone density, not just muscles, but bone density. Builds balance and help prevent falls. In the elderly, the number one cause of death, and we can prevent it, are falls. When someone falls, that is a cause of the individual's death. 
and to test the effects of resistant exercise on brain function, researchers used an animal model of Alzheimer's disease and mice with genetic mutation associated with a buildup of plaque in the brain. Like plaque in the arteries, we have plaque in the brain. Commonly called tangled and tau, tau protein. So the mice with a genetic mutation associated with a buildup of plaque in the brain were trained to climb a sloping ladder, <laughs> wow, with weights attached to their tails. <laughs> that's um, that's like some of the bodybuilders, the, the, the people that want to get strong, they attach a belt to their waist with weights behind, and then they walk, dragging that weight, building up your legs, building up your back, building up your strength. I love it. And the weight was 75 to 100% of their body weight. So I weigh 150 pounds. I would have to pull 150 pounds behind me. Quite amazing. Well, the results of this, I love this test. Versus lazy animals, sedentary animals that did not receive any resistant training. Now get this, plaque in the brain causes dementia, loss of memory, forgetfulness. Well, the plaque levels in the resistant training mice was 33% lower for the exercise group. And the serum cortisol levels were lower, showing less stress, and agitated behavior, restless movement, was reduced by almost 15%. I think it is such a great study. Can you just imagine in your mind the mice going up the sloping ladder, pulling a weight, (laughs) pulling a weight attached to their tails? I love it. And they had a weight attached to their tail, 75 to 100% of their body weight. Of course, that was very small, but not for them. So that's like, I'm pulling 150 pounds. Dan John, who is a great exercise enthusiast, he thinks the best types of exercise are those that are functional. Those that we would do something every day, like picking up the groceries, out of the trunk of the car or picking up groceries off the off the road, not the road, but the parking lot, just before you put them in the trunk. Um, you know, picking things up. Picking things up make us stronger. Pushing things make us stronger. Pulling things make us stronger. You don't have to do specific exercises. Push and carries. Carry a weight and walk 50 feet. Get kettlebells and put one kettlebell in in one arm, one hand, and walk. And walk maybe 50 feet. On the way back, you change hands. Walk another 50 feet. These are all things that would make us stronger, but not doing specific exercises. Carries, push and pulls are all extremely effective. Now, pediatric diabetes. You know, I don't know a word for that. It's really sad that we have to find a way to treat diabetes in children. Unheard of 20 or 30 years ago. Type 2 diabetes in kids. We are getting to a point where kids are now dealing with diseases that were once associated only with the elderly, who had lived 60, 70, 80 years. 
And now the FDA announced that two new medications are approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes in kids ages 10 and older. The adverse effects of these drugs include nausea, diarrhea, urinary tract infections, and fungal infections. And then soon there has to be a drug to treat these conditions. Kids are being put on drugs way, way, way too early. Previously, only one oral medication, metformin, was approved for kids. From 2002 to 2015, only 13 years, the rates of diabetes in children increased almost 5% every year. The number of kids with type 2 diabetes nearly doubled from 2001 to 2017. Some experts predict that if current trends continue, By 2060, the rates of diabetes in kids under 20 could raise by up to 700%. Why it is so important that we learn how to feed our family and teach our kids how to eat healthily because we are going down the wrong track. And it's not going to be very, very pretty as we get to 2050, 2060. You know, only 30 years off. Not going to be very good. But friends, I've got to pause here for a moment for some commercials to be played. The station for identification. I'm going to be back, so don't you go away. Stay right where you are. This is Terry Naturally with Terry Talks Nutrition. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally, and this is another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're at the bottom of the hour, and we're going to go up all the way to the top of the hour. So we have lots of time yet to talk about our health, your health, my health, because nobody else is going to do it for us. We have to do it. If you're not happy where you are health-wise, you have to make some changes. You can't just eat less food or, the, or less of the junk food you've been eating and get healthy. You've got to make some big changes. Change the diet. Do some things that really can make you healthy over the next 5, 10 years, whatever, however long you're going to live. We can do it. It's not going to be a difficult thing to have to, to, have to correct. So we're going to join this program this morning in this half hour with how to get the most value out of supplements, particularly in this case, curcumin. Curcumin is expensive. Good curcumin. I mean, you can get junk. There's a lot of junk out there. And you can get turmeric, and turmeric is not curcumin. I've talked to journalist, and try to explain to them what curcumin is and what turmeric is. And then they write an article and say, turmeric does this, turmeric does that, turmeric does this. It does not. Curcumin does. Curcumin is found in the root or the rhizome of the turmeric plant. And it's only there in anywhere from 2 to 4% of the entire contents of the root. Not enough to be used as a medicine. Curcumin is. But then curcumin has some disadvantages as well. It's very difficult to be absorbed systemically. It's fat-soluble. It cannot penetrate the intestinal lining because as we swallow something, it goes down into our lower intestines It's absorbed through the lining of the intestinal tract into the bloodstream, 
and the blood circulates it throughout the body, delivering it to all the cells in the body for good health. But compounds, many key compounds, cannot be absorbed systemically, cannot go through the body and enter the system of the body. Curcumin is that kind of compound. It can't easily be absorbed. So researchers know curcumin works. There has been over 25,000 studies on just curcumin on all a variety of condition diseases liver disease, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, diabetes. Oh, you can go on and on. There is not one disease that has not been researched using curcumin. And curcumin can be used for every condition imaginable. If I had to rely on just one substance, it would probably be curcumin. But now here's a new report from Consumer Lab and Consumer Lab did a price comparison for turmeric and curcumin and all the various products that make up turmeric and curcumin. Now, they're this part of the same plant, but they're different. Turmeric is not purified. It has compounds in it that are not, well, like oxalic acid, like some heavy metals. And curcumin is purified. It does not contain these compounds. And these compounds, these products, to determine the cost of obtaining 500 milligrams of curcuminoids, now curcuminoids there are three of them found in curcumin and from each a typical dosage used in research studies. Now the results of this survey, one of the most expensive products based on milligrams of curcumin that it contained was Spring Valley Gummy from Walmart. One bottle of gummies is $9.98. But to get 500 milligrams of curcuminoids, the recommended daily dosage, you need to, have, you need to consume 25 gummies a day, or almost half the bottle, making the cost per dose $4.25. Now, the cost of one 750 milligram soft gel of curcumin complex with turmeric essential oil containing 500 milligrams of curcuminoids is just a dollar four cents. The Walmart product is four times more expensive to get 500 milligrams of curcuminoids as a clinically proven curcumin with turmeric essential oil. Which really is your best value? I think you know. People love gummies because they're sweet, it's like eating candy. But there's nothing of value in the level of scientifically proven medicinal value in a gummy. They're mostly gelatin and sugar. They put enough of the substance in it to make a claim for it, but nothing of value. Now, this is a question I hear all the time. Stomach acid. I have too much stomach acid. And I say, no, you don't. You do not have enough stomach acid of the right kind. The stomach acid we have in our stomach that is secreted by the lining of the mucous membrane in the stomach 
is called hydrochloric acid that stimulates the flow of acid in the stomach. And when we have enough hydrochloric acid in the stomach, it causes the release of an enzyme called pepsin, which breaks down protein. Now, if you don't eat enough protein and you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach and you're eating a lot of carbs and sugar, which causes fermentation, that's how they make wine. A lot of bubbles. So then you have the wrong stomach acid. So what happens when you neutralize stomach acid? You don't stop heartburn by stopping stomach acid. That sounds crazy, right? Because that's all you hear on, on TV. All the references to the antacids to put out all that acid. So do you, do you realize when, when you take away all the stomach acid, we need hydrochloric acid in our stomach. Our stomach is a very, very low pH. On a scale of one to four, zero to four, excuse me, 14, our stomach acid should be one or two in our, in our stomach. And if we don't have that in our stomach, food is not digested properly, especially protein. And if you don't digest food and it has a way to, to sneak into the bloodstream, like undigested protein sets up an allergy reaction. Not only the substance, but because we didn't digest the substance. And then that interferes with calcium, B12, and iron absorption. We can't digest these without hydrochloric acid. One study documented over 40% reduction in calcium absorption when taking Prilosec, an antacid. Undigested protein in the intestines can act as an allergen, causes allergy reactions. Also increased risk of bacterial and viral exposure, viral infection. So what does this mean for people that have acid reflux? Taking an acid blocker or acid-reducing medication can cause more problems than it cures. We need acid in our stomach. When you take something like Prilosec or Stronger, you are completely neutralizing the acid in the stomach, all acid, good and bad. And then you don't digest protein. You don't digest calcium. You don't digest B12, iron. And then you have an overgrowth of bacteria, candida, because hydrochloric acid would kill that. And you can have more causes with viral infection or any of the other infections because you're not killing them off with the hydrochloric acid. So if you want to get natural, lasting relief of heartburn and GERD, The best thing to do is restore stomach acidity with betaine hydrochloride. That is a natural supplement you can buy in health food stores or drug stores everywhere. Betaine hydrochloride. HCL. It's just known as HCL. Go to your health food store. They have the best quality of HCL. And sometimes it is combined with pepsin, the enzyme that breaks down protein. That increases the acidity of natural betaine hydrochloride to digest all our foods properly. And then 
we can reduce the symptoms of overacidity with two ingredients, two natural compounds. One is called D, like dog, a D lemonine. And the other one is called C buckthorn. 600 milligrams once or twice daily of this combination. D lemonine is a compound extracted from the peels of citrus. D lemonine. And it Actually, it, it, it te- protects both the stomach lining without interfering with acid production and also helps peristalsis, the contraction of the intestines to keep food moving through the digestive system. B. Th- B- C. Buckthorn, S E A dot C, that the letter C, S E A. C. buckthorn is a source of beneficial fatty acids. Very healing for the mucous membrane. Especially omega-7. Now, I think you're all familiar with omega-6, omega-3, omega-9 maybe. But this is omega-7. And omega-7 has been shown to protect and heal the stomach ulcers, stomach lining, as well as reducing the inflammation of the intestinal mucosa, the mucous membrane. And then you can reset your digestive system by taking a blend of 14 Ayurvedic herbs that has been used in India for thousands of years for digestive problems. And regulating your digestive system, whether you have diarrhea or constipation, it will regulate your digestive system. Now, some of these herbs, like ginger, andagraphus, coca-cola, there's 800 milligrams of these 14 different herbs, and then take a serving or two with plenty of water at bedtime. It's a really good way to, if you have constipation, if you have diarrhea, it regulates it. Now, here's a question I had. Dear Terry, what do you suggest for someone recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a brain disorder that causes uncontrollable movements such as shaking, stiffness, and difficulty with balance. Parkinson's occurs when nerve cells in the brain die off, reducing the level reducing the level of dopamine. And we know that dopamine is a neurotransmitter that helps the brain management movement. There is no cure at this time for Parkinson's disease. But natural products can be quite helpful because we can rebuild nerve cells. We can rebuild brain cells over time. There are three suggestions for Parkinson's disease. Three I have run across the scientific research on three different natural substances that could have a great impact on those people that are suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Now, does it cure it? No. It slows it down? Yes. It makes it better? Yes. You feel better? Yes. There's less shaking? Yes. But not cured. Curcumin. We just talked about curcumin. And use the curcumin that is bound to the turmeric essential oils. It is one of the best compound 
for reducing inflammation. And in Parkinson's disease, they have found inflammation in the brain cells. And then they die off. So this reduces inflammation, including in the brain, and has been shown to stimulate the formation of new nerve cells. And a good dosage is 750 milligrams, which provides about 500 milligrams of curcuminoids once or twice daily. The other substance I've run across, ran across has, is called glutathione. Every chronic disease depletes the levels of glutathione in the body. And it is one of the most important antioxidants in the body. I would suggest 300 to 600 milligrams daily in the active reduced form of glutathione and CoQ10. Coenzyme Q10. Extremely crucial for cellular energy production. So I would suggest 100 to 200 milligrams of a chewable form of curcumin that is complexed to gamma psychodextrin to improve absorption. It has a major impact to support the health of the individuals with Alzheimer's disease. Now, kids are going back to school, not far off. Do you want to send them off with maybe with a good supplement to keep them healthy? In their days at school, they can focus better, they can think better, they can remember better, they have better concentration, their immune system is at peak optimal level. Well, here are some very safe and effective choices for kids. More than 40% of school-age kids in the U.S. have at least one chronic health condition. 40% of our kids today have a chronic health condition. And here are some of the best suggestions I can offer you to keep your child healthy and more active at school. The first one is propolis. Propolis is a substance the bees collect from trees. They use it for their own safety, their own security, and they use it to build up the immunity of the hive or the colony. It's a vegetable product. It's just collected by the bees. The bees don't make it. The bees collect it. And it is antibacterial antiviral, a natural medicine to prevent colds and flu and upper respiratory tract infections. And a dosage for kids, and, and you don't have to worry about dosage. You want to get a good dosage, but you don't have to worry if you give them too much. Propolis is very, very, very safe. No side effects whatsoever. For children, 100 to 200 milligrams daily with food or as a chewable wafer, chewable tablet. What about sleep and stress for kids? Well, certainly melatonin. Yes, for kids. Every human body produces melatonin under the right conditions. If they don't produce the melatonin, then use it as a supplement form to make sure the body gets plenty of melatonin. How much for a child? Maybe two milligrams, two and a half milligrams, maybe up to five for an older child. It's non-toxic, very safe, no side effects for sleep and building up the immune system. So it's very, very effective 
for increasing the circadian rhythm and the immune system. Now, echinacea and gustifolia is very, very effective for the anxiety and stress. Taking it daily or when needed for anxiety and stress. Now, here's the kind of dosage I would use. About two and a half milligrams of melatonin at bedtime. 20 milligrams or up to maybe 40 milligrams if necessary. Very safe. Angustifolia is very safe, no side effects. And it's really effective for children over the age of four. 20 milligrams of the echinacea angustifolia twice daily. Now, if we are thinking of increasing focus and concentration, brain-focused nutrients that are highly effective in kids would be phosphatidylsterine, about 30 milligrams, rhodiola, about 25 milligrams, French grapeseed extract, 25 milligrams, vitamin B6, NAC, NAC, L-tyrosine, L-taurine. And this is a wonderful children's formula been used by doctors for increasing focus, concentration. So these are nutrients that are focused for the brain function. Take daily. You can increase the dosage as needed every few days until you get a response that is notice noticeable. We only have a few minutes left until the end of the program, so I'm not going to get onto another topic just yet. I, I don't want it to, to rush it so you don't really understand it. And I just breeze through it. It doesn't do it justice. But I want to remind you, we have the power. You and I, we have everything we need to be healthy or to be healthier. There are, there are some conditions that we may not make as much progress with because they are more difficult to work with. And time has solidified the condition in the individual. And sometimes the damage has been done for such a long period of time that it can't be undone. But everybody can get healthier. Everybody can feel better. Everybody can have a better attitude. Everybody can make changes that are beyond their wildest imagination. If we think we're sick and that's nothing, there's nothing we can do about it, oh, I made an appointment with my doctor. Make, a, make an appointment with yourself and make the changes you need to make in order to be healthy. When I finish my blog on the three principles to improve your health and reduce the aging process. Now, I'm, I'm not telling you aging is going to stop. It's not going to stop. It's inevitable. It's everywhere. We are going to get older, but we can get older in better health and enjoy our later years. We can do things that most people are crippled with. They can't do it. But we can. So with just our last few seconds left in this program, I will be signing off for today. But I just wanted to remind you that you can join me every weekend, same time, same station, for more health tips and as you can have a better quality of life. Your health is your choice. It's a choice. So choose well. And please, pray for this crazy world. I can't believe, I know. Well, God bless you, my friends. I pray for you. And God bless this great country. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.